Welcome beyond the Reiki Gateway. I'm your host, Andrea Kennedy. Like countless others, Reiki found me when I wasn't even looking, and then it ignited a whole new world of questions. This podcast explores topics of interest for the spiritually curious. Join me for discussions and special guests on subjects such as past lives, crystal healing, spiritual awakening, ascension, energy healing, and more, all to assist and inspire you along your unique soul's journey. This episode is sponsored by Mainstream Reiki, offering live and online Reiki classes and a membership community to help Reiki practitioners succeed and grow in their practice. Find out more at MainstreamReiki.com. Hello and welcome beyond the Reiki Gateway. It's Andrea Kennedy, and it's my joy to introduce you to Marisol Semenez Carrillo. She is a gifted singer and an intuitive sound and energy healer. She possesses the unique ability to channel healing light information, light codes, and vibrations, which she seamlessly infuses into her captivating singing, often expressed through the ethereal language of light. She delves deep into the inner realms with her guided inner journeys, helping individuals on a transformative path to reconnect with their sacred heart, align with their soul's purpose, and step into their true power. This all sounds absolutely fascinating, Marisol. Welcome beyond the Reiki Gateway. I'm so thrilled that you're here with us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, I am too. And, you know, this is a topic, this light language, I guess. Somebody asked, one of my students asked me about this a few years ago, and, you know, I didn't have that much to tell her. Um, it's a newer type of healing, I, mm -hmm. I think. And I'm wondering, you know, how did you get into, uh, well, when did you get into it? And can you even explain, I guess, first off, what is it? Actually, what is it? And how long have you been doing it? Well, light language, I would say, to sum it up in a nutshell, it's a cosmic language that um, goes beyond the linear thinking mind and is received through the heart and speaks directly to the soul. So it's not like a word-to-word -word translation, but a vibration. And um, just to, to explain it briefly, and the way that I got into it was actually really interesting. It was only about, I think, two, a little more than two years ago. I was doing an online shamanic course and um, before making the healing arts and the sound healing my, my main path, I mean, I've been doing it for many years, but I was on stage full time as a singer and actress and then decided to move it around and make this my main path. Um, so I was still searching for ways to enhance the sound healing to go deeper and I wasn't really sure where it was going to go. And during this course, all of a sudden I started writing light language. So symbols came out and then I started writing, I think like a day later, actual letters and words, but not like words that we know. And a day later, I just started singing it. It just came out. It was like a switch had been flipped and I just started singing it and it clicked and it made so much sense. And since that day, it's just been flowing. So I'm very grateful for that. Wow. So light language, I always just thought it was sound. And so what you're bringing up is written and mm -hmm. in symbols as well. Do, do other people do that? Uh, is yeah. that common? There's different forms. So some people write it um, in, in symbols and they do whole paintings and artwork with these symbols. Then some people sign it with their hands. They have like beautiful movements where they move in the quantum field and they, they work with that. And then it, often it is spoken. Um, and for me, it's, I speak it too, but I mostly sing it. So um, the sung version, although my hands do move as well when I sing sometimes. So um, moving in the energy field. So um, yeah, there's different ways to express it and to receive it. Wow, that, that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't really know that. So the healing then, what do you think the healing mechanism is then? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for sound, it makes sense for me because that's vibration. We interpret the sound waves, you know, in our, in our bodies, really. Mm -hmm. 
And so that makes sense to me. So sound healing. If someone's looking at a painting, and I realize this isn't your specialty, but if someone's looking at a painting uh, or words on a page that they aren't familiar with Hmm. the sounds that they make, is there healing with that as well that is open to them to receive? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So if the artist that is receiving the symbols, if if it's a pure channel, um, the vibration will also move through that person into the symbol. So if you see it um, drawn or written, it will carry a frequency that if you um, look at it and dive into it, you there there is something that activates within you as well. So that definitely has healing powers. Oh. That reminds me, you know, in the Reiki world, we might infuse an object with Reiki. Mm -hmm. And then that object can help whoever engages with it. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's, so that makes total sense to me now that I think about that. Thank you for explaining that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Do you think that people can learn light language or is it just something that happens? to them. I think it's more something that happens. I don't think I don't think it's about learning it because it's something that you remember. So when it came through me, I never really went into the subject of light language. Like I never really thought about it. It just happened. And then afterwards, I started doing research. And then I was like, Oh, that's what happened to me. Okay. So it's a deep remembering of your of your soul's origin in a way connecting to your heart. Um, being centered in your being. And when you, when the channel within you opens, you receive what is what you are meant to receive in that way. So it's not something to really learn. It's something to open to and allow to flow. So it's not like step one, two, three. Right. Yeah. Do you think that different people who offer light language, are they offering the same language? Are there commonalities there? Are there different, you know, because I'm trying to take this and sort of put it in the earth context. Mm -hmm. You know, we have different languages here on earth that we speak. And here, you know, we do have to learn them. But, but anyway, is there, are there different light languages? Or is it all kind of the same? It can sound different, like it comes through differently for every channel. So you'll have some channels that sound similar, then you have some that sound completely different. So it's, um, it's a little bit different for everyone that receives it, it'll be a very personal way of expressing it. But it's always a container for the frequency and the vibration that comes through. So it's like a vibrational container. Hmm. And You know, I think we have a lot of our listeners who, you know, we hear a lot about star seeds, Mm -hmm. you know, and recently we did an episode about galactic astrology and Mm -hmm. things like that. Does light language um, correspond with star seeds, like planet, planetary locations or anything like that, different types of beings? out in the universe or is is light language something that can be traced to maybe a certain planet or galaxy or something like that oh it's definitely connected i mean i'm very connected to the andromedan energy and of course we we have other experiences as well but that's something i've i'm very deeply connected to and have been to for many years um And since light language is such a beautiful container, like I'll work with different beings from different star races. So it can be that, I mean, this is specifically for me, someone else might experience it differently. But for me, it it is when I sing, um, the light language is being filled with what comes through in that moment. So I offer online sound healing journeys and I had an Andromedan one. So there will be Andromedan frequencies moving through me that will then then um, find its way to the people listening through the light language and the sound. I've also done an Arcturian one. Now, for me, the Arcturian light language, it didn't sound different from the way um, that I, if you want to say, spoke it or sung it, but it was encoded and filled with a different frequency. 
Oh. Now, there are people that say they receive different in, let's say, dialects from different races. That's not how it is for me specifically. So it's really interesting to talk to different people, how they experience it. Um, so for me personally, it's that I receive different frequencies from different beings that then fill, um, fill my singing, basically. Oh, yeah, that's really fascinating. You know, light language, I would imagine more people are opening up to this. Mm -hmm. You know, as I said, when my student asked me this years ago, I didn't know much about it. But leading up to meeting you today, I've been, you know, sort of going back and thinking about things. And probably about 12 years ago, mm -hmm. I was attending a Reiki share where I lived. And we were there and there was a woman there. And this is exactly what she was doing. But I don't even think we knew the terminology. But mm -hmm. I remember that, um, you know, it was new to her what she was doing. And she just knew that it was helpful and that people said that they enjoyed it and, and really were helped mm -hmm. when she did it. So she offered it during the Reiki share as several people were receiving Reiki on different tables throughout the, the very large room. And what struck me about how she did it was it was songs. I mean, mm -hmm. literal songs that had very different rhythms, very different feelings, you know, that it would bring up with you. And I think that's probably the very first time that I experienced light language. But as mm -hmm. I said, I don't even think that she knew to call it that. That's how yeah. new it was there. And and just for a little personal story about that, I remember um, one of the songs that she sang, because again, they were very different, mm -hmm. uh, very different sounding when compared to each other. But one of them, I was actually receiving Reiki, and it took me to a whole nother lifetime Mm -hmm. And it seemed to be a, here on earth, but I went to this whole other lifetime. The imagery was so vivid. And, you know, it's been 12 years. I mean, I still remember that. So mm. there is something to all of this. I am just absolutely without a doubt. And um, the other thing I'll say is uh, you offer, you have a YouTube channel with videos yeah. and, and all, uh, a lot there. And Wow, I really encourage our listeners to tune in there. Let's give the listeners the YouTube channel name uh, right now. Yes, uh, so it's called uh, Marisol. So you can see my first name and then the magical sound of your soul. Oh, nice. But nice. I think if you put in my name, Marisol Ximenez Carrillo, you'll also find it. So, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And we'll have links and all of that too, you know, to accompany the show to help them find it because... While we're sitting here talking about it and it's fascinating, oh my goodness, to experience it is something, you know, totally, totally different. And so, oh, please, please go listen and watch uh, <laughs> there. So when I remembered about the 12 years ago and that experience, the other thing that I thought about was how things have changed in the mm -hmm. world, right, in 12 years. And it might have been very new to myself and those in attendance that that evening 12 years ago but everything is so different and i think that we're at a place where many more people can accept this and can be mm -hmm. open to this in these ideas whereas all you know many years ago this would have i think been very difficult to be enjoyed, to be known about, and to spread around the world. And I'd love mm -hmm. to get your thoughts about that. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, even this podcast, and there are others, and um, it, there's so much coming up, and it's so much more common to speak about these things, or mediums, that channel. Um, like you said, like 12, 15, 20 years ago, that was not out there like it is now. And that just shows the deep transformation that we're going through that even though we are witnessing so much chaos um, and things in the world where you might think it's just getting worse and worse, but that's just 
the transformation that we're going through and that people are more open to all of this is showing that rise of consciousness and that things are changing within all of us. And a lot of people are opening up to that. They are suddenly receiving light language or whatever it may be, or may be open to listening. Um, I had a woman say to me, oh my God, what language is that? I have no idea what it is, but I feel like I'm home. So mm -hmm. it sparked something like a remembering without her knowing what it is. So I think there's something really big going on as we shift into a completely different um, way of being into a new golden age. But now we're, of course, in the phase where old systems are crumbling and it might be scary, but there is something really um, beautiful beneath all of that. Yes, absolutely. We're just in unprecedented times. And mm. that word, it's been so overused, hasn't it? The last few years, unprecedented. But it's so true. It's mm -hmm. so true. We just don't have a context for what's going on uh, with us. But I, I find it absolutely compelling, exciting. And I'm wondering if you would agree. I feel like I've kind of waited my whole life for this mm -hmm. moment in time. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I remember like over 10 years ago saying, okay, there's going to be a huge shift. I wonder how it's all going to like really get going. And now things are moving and things are shifting. And I'm like, okay, it may be very uncomfortable, but a lot is happening. A lot is coming to the surface. So we're, we're right in the middle of it. We are, we are. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it is rough at times, mm -hmm. but you know, we've come a long way already. Yes. A long way. In just a few short years, you know, mm -hmm. I, I feel like. So it is a little interesting, though, because we really don't know where we're going, do we? Yeah, so what helps me tremendously is knowing that in the long run, we're heading to a really good place. Um, but of course, there's a lot of things we don't know yet. So there's this huge unknown, and I always say we need to make that unknown our friend because the unknown is, is all possibilities. So um, I think that's like a key point now to step out of fear. And even though we don't have all the answers and sometimes don't know where we're going, but trusting the, the deeper process of it and making the unknown your friend, I think that's really important. I agree so much because, you know, we, we usually fear what mm. we don't know or, you know, when yeah. things get unpredictable. But um, I'd, I'd love to talk about your your work in the terms of or in the realm of healing and what have you experienced maybe yourself um, mm -hmm. as a channel to this because I would imagine it would be very healing for you as the channel can you talk mm -hmm. about that oh absolutely um, every session that I give has healing aspects for myself as well absolutely and it's absolutely fascinating mm -hmm. And it's always interesting sometimes after a session because I'll say things and things will come through and afterwards I'm like, oh, I needed to hear that as well. Mm -hmm. That made a lot of sense. So it's always interesting who comes to see you and the messages that come through and what it often has to do with me as well. So there are a lot of synchronicities. It's very interesting. Uh, yeah, I've seen that also in, in the work that I've done over the years mm -hmm. and um, it's so easy, isn't it, to deliver some of this and then to apply it and live from that ourselves. It, that can be challenging, but uh, I, and I'll, I'm speaking for myself here, but uh, mm -hmm. certainly not for you. But I can give great advice, you know, about what comes through, what I channel for other people, that those messages. But wow, I could just never come up with that stuff. You know, mm. I, I need to hear it as much, I think, mm. as they do. But so I so relate to that. But um, I'm wondering about the healing that you've seen in mm -hmm. your practice with your clients. Mm -hmm. What what sort of results or, or what are what are what is being worked on mm -hmm. uh, with them? You know, I guess I'm curious about are they being helped with ancestral things, um, cords, DNA, you know, just if you could expand upon what's possible with light mm. language. Well, definitely everything you mentioned flows into it. And so it's a combination of the energy healing with the sound healing. So, of course, I, I want to 
give the best to that person of what they need in that moment. So it may be, it's very different from person to person, where they stand, what they need, how deep do they want to dive into all of this. So um, it varies. But in general, it's a very gentle approach, diving a bit deeper and deeper. There can be ancestral healing, definitely. Um, I've done a lot of cord cutting and resolving because that is a very important issue, definitely. Um, and through the, especially through the singing, I mean, there is DNA activation happening, a lot of activation within the physical body because it moves through all levels and layers. So the physical body, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual. So, um, I mean, of course you always have to say, I'm, I'm no doctor. Like I don't give any diagnosis or anything. This is purely on the energetic level, but it's um, really magical what can happen when you dive into that. Um, sometimes I'm being taken back to, to the inner child connections to that. Most times, um, beings show up as well, guides or, um, star beings, star brothers, star sisters. So whoever is there to support the healing and the session will join and will let their frequency and light and information also flow into the session. So there's a lot that can happen, um, in one of these sessions. It sounds like it. Yeah. So is it a combination of you having discussion with them, you know, singing? How does a session sort of um, unfold or, or mm -hmm. what's contained in a session usually? I, I would imagine it changes all yeah. the time. Well, of course, if I don't know a client, um, we'll speak for a while so that I get to know the person a little bit and see what the person's wishes are for that session. And And of course, it's also a safe space, a session like this, for someone to express what they're going through, to be heard, to be seen. So some people, um, they need a while to, you know, also get to know me and and feel into the session. So that space is definitely there to do that. And I've learned the more that I then step back and um, just be the channel. I'm a very visual person. I'll receive images. Um, also, when singing light, light language, you'll see or I see streams of light moving through. Um, I, I'll have a hologram of the person in front of me if it's a remote session. Yeah, and then I usually take the client on an inner journey as well, um, guiding them through what I see, what they receive, what beings are there, what happens, and I combine it with the singing. So the singing amplifies what is happening, and it anchors in the healing frequencies and energies of the healing and of the session that we're doing. So it's like a combination of speaking, of guiding them through this journey and the singing. Oh, wow. That just sounds really incredible and, and complex, but I don't mean complex in a, in a negative way, complex in an energetic way, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. I think it seems like there's a lot happening, um, uh, multidimensionally, uh, yeah. in a session like that. For sure. Yeah, and it's beautiful because these energies are flowing in and we all we have to do is open up to them. So I'm just receiving. I'm just allowing it to flow through. And so that's really beautiful once you surrender to that, to notice what's around us and what is serving us. Right. Huh. About how long do you spend with a client? The sessions I have on my website are either an hour or one and a half, but usually... Uh, um, especially if it's the first session and we do talk a bit in the beginning, it usually is at least one and a half hours. So it's hard to say. It's also because the vibrations are very high. So if someone is completely new to this, it might be a bit shorter so that, that the person can get used to those energies. If someone's very used to it, you can do longer and more and go deeper. But I'd say at least an hour, often an hour and a half. So mm. can be longer as well, but that's like, yeah, somewhere in those lines. Yeah, that's it's interesting because I thought backwards. I thought, oh, if somebody's new, you probably spend longer. But I love that you shared that that you know there's an acclimation or you know a, a process there. Mm -hmm. And so I hadn't really thought about that. So that's a really interesting facet to that. I think mm -hmm. with your work, are you seeing a theme? You know, do the do the themes come up? Um, and I guess my question is, collectively, mm -hmm. are, do you think we're kind of focusing in a certain area with what light language, what it is that, um, what it's helping with? 
Does I don't know if does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. It does. I think everything that goes into this area, the energy work, the light language, um, everyone that works in this field, I think, I mean, of course, everyone has their own issues and things they want to resolve, but there's a theme underlying everything to me personally, and I think that is coming back to our power, reclaiming our power, no longer hiding who we are, um, having the courage to show ourselves as we are, to be authentic, to not dim our light, all of this to come back to who we are, to live from our hearts and to really step back into our power, whatever that means for someone individually. But I think that is something that shows up for many of us at the moment. I couldn't agree more with mm. what you just said. I, I do think, you know, I've said it here and there, no offense to gurus out there, but I think the age of the guru is over. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. I, I, my feeling is we're all being called to our own light, mm -hmm. our own power and discernment. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, you know, with everything happening in the world, it all goes together because mm -hmm. we, our history is that we placed our trust in outside entities, uh, institutions, people, things like that. And as all of that stuff can't be trusted anymore, you know, who are we going to trust? Mm -hmm. And so th we're being really naturally called back home to ourselves. And so I love the fact that you said that because that's just more confirmation to me that mm. um, this is indeed happening. And as more people uh, do come home to their power and step forward without fear anymore, you know, yeah. I think that's the main thing. And as they claim that for themselves, we're in an upswell, an upswell of, of lifting mm. and I just think that there's no better way to have that ascension than a sort of a groundswell movement. No leader. Yes. It's, it, it rests inside the individual. And together, yes. oh, we're doing it. Yes, that's so important what you said. Be your own guru. That doesn't mean you can't look up to someone or maybe the word let yourself be inspired by someone. Absolutely. It's great to inspire each other. But to not give your power away to someone or or um, expect that someone is going to solve it for you. There are incredible people that can help you solve something or help you get back into your power, but you still need to do it. So to me, a good teacher, a good mentor is always someone who encourages me to reclaim that power and responsibility for myself and assist me in doing that, but not trying to make me dependent on him or her, you know, like you need uh, session after session after session. No, you need whatever you need. You know, it can mm -hmm. be one session or a hundred sessions. You decide what you need. Yeah. To help people step back into that. Oh, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love that too. You know what? is kind of strange that came to my mind when you were talking was infomercials. Remember, mm -hmm, you know, infomercials. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I would get, I would guess that they used to be more effective years ago. I think this is another thing that is just not as effective anymore, you know, and, and why? Because the, the pitch with a lot of those is this is, this product's going to solve your problems. Mm -hmm. And haven't we all been there, done that, you know, and we've clicked and we've bought the thing and did it solve our problems? No. And it just, it's everywhere I look these days, it's just example after example mm -hmm. of this self-empowerment, self-reliance and that owning the power, you know, mm. and that's a, a strange example, but I just think that it's really literally everywhere that we look through mm. society, through our everyday lives, the message is just over and over and over to yeah. come back home to the self. And mm. we've just so forever been told it's all out there, you know, and, and uh, it's the opposite. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I just love the, this whole uh, subject uh, and in your work, really um, just so many of us are working together 
um, mm-hmm. in these different modalities, all toward th- bringing more light and healing to the planet. So it's super exciting. And- Hello, it's Andrea. And in addition to being your host here at the podcast, I'm the founder of Mainstream Reiki. Where bringing Reiki further into the mainstream is my mission. I offer quality Reiki classes of all levels to students attending live from around the world. And I've built a membership community as well to help Reiki people connect with each other through discussions, events, and Reiki practice. So if you're considering learning Reiki, or you already have, I invite you to visit MainstreamReiki.com to discover your next step in your Reiki journey. Thank you. And now, back to the show. And I wanted to um, take a couple of steps back because you came to this from very mainstream background, um, singing, dancing, being on stage. Hmm. And we really just skipped through all of all, all of that earlier stuff. And there you were ha- at this one class that you were taking, which led to this. And I'm wondering if you could um, fill in the picture a little bit uh, about yourself because, mm-hmm. and the reason I'd like to go there is I think a lot of our listeners are thinking that they need to take a class, they need to do a, do this, that, and the next thing, which is, is valuable. But I think sometimes we think that, um, again, we have to find our spirituality. We have to find our gifts outside of ourselves instead of just going through life. Mm -hmm. And so it fascinates me about you because it doesn't seem as though you were really on some quest, uh, you know, to find uh, a healing modality or, or something, but maybe I'm wrong. So even as you grew up, were you intuitive? Were did you feel spiritual or anything like that? Yes, yeah, so I'll I'll go back for that. Okay, great. Um, and yes, yeah, so this course sparked the light language singing. But before that, I had been on a path of working energetically for quite a few years already. Oh. So that then came on top of it, basically. So I actually I have to go back many many years um, into my teenage years. So when I was around, I'd say around sixteen, I started developing pretty severe depressions oh. because I was always very sensitive. I always felt like I didn't belong. I never really fit in. And I always said, they dropped me off on the wrong planet. I don't belong here. I want to go home. But I didn't know why I said that. Like, I was homesick and I didn't know why, because I have a beautiful family. Um, So I was like, why do I feel like this? It was like, everything just felt wrong. School felt wrong. Sometimes I felt like walking through a movie scene, you know, it like didn't seem real. So um, I started developing severe depressions. Like I like, it was painful to exist if I, mm. if I, yeah, I can put it like that. And so my parents, they're actually really great um, because back then my dream was to be on stage and they allowed me to drop out of school after 10th grade. I would have had to go um, to 13th grade in Germany where I grew up. So I was accepted at the University of Arts in Berlin and went there when I was 17, almost 18 to study, which was incredible and like a dream come true. So I was able to sing and dance the whole day. Um, it was a lot of work, but fun work. Wow. Uh, but still on the inside, I felt like I was dying. Mm. So it made no sense to me because I thought I have my dream life. I have a great family. I get to do what I love. Why do I feel like this inside? And thank God I was always spiritual in a sense, thanks to my mom. Um, So I always thought, okay, well, you can't kill yourself because then you're going to have to come back and do it all over again. Now you have a good family, a good life. You might as well do it now. So that's what I thought. And um, so I was never suicidal, thank God. But I, having gone through what I went through, I can understand how somebody can get to that point emotionally. So I have great empathy for anyone who has had feelings like that. Um, so then I started seeing different therapists and I'm sure there are wonderful therapists out there, but they were not the ones for me. They were extremely analytical and just trying to put stuff, I don't know, like into, how do you say, uh, it was very black and white. Let's put Uh, it that way. uh And very much on the analytical level. And I'm like, well, I know all of that, but that's not my problem. And they didn't really know what to do with me. 
So at some point, point I thought, okay, this is not going to get me anywhere. And then I, I found two women in Berlin where I lived um, that worked spiritually. They, they are heal healers and mediums. So especially one woman, she's a good friend of mine today. And we started working, I was then in my early 20s, mid 20s. Yeah. And that was like a game changer. Like I started to understand why I had the depressions, why I felt homesick, what was going on with me. And that was the true beginning of my healing journey. And then as the years went on and I, I um, worked a lot with her and then other things um, added to it. And at some point I knew that I wanted to work with people. I wanted to help people. So I did start taking different courses and um, it just started blending my own healing journey, journey and learning different modalities and things. And then at some point I just started giving sessions to people at the theater where I worked that were interested. So that's how it kind of started. And then it just kept building up and building up. And then the sound uh, flew into or came into it at some point. And then, yeah, two years ago, the light language, and now I'm doing it full time. So that's like the, the whole story, basically. Wow. And what a story that is. Oh, my goodness. You know, I think a lot of people can relate to that feeling mm -hmm. like that this is not their home. And I think more and more people are talking about that. So yeah. I think that's really wonderful that you share that with mm -hmm. other people. Uh, it is becoming more and more common. And I think the idea of interplanetary souls, souls that have lived the majority of their lives in other places. And I think that is also coming, becoming more popular mm -hmm. as well. And I don't mean popular other than people talking about it and recognizing that perhaps that describes them mm -hmm. um, and why they feel disconnected from yeah. this place. So, oh, that is really quite fascinating. I'm wondering also um, about the this topic of DNA activation. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because uh, my background, you know, very mainstream. Uh, I have a degree in physics and my concentration was health physics. So mm -hmm. having to do with radiation and, uh, you know, all of that glamorous stuff, but a um, lot of biology in my training. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about DNA and changes in DNA and light codes and, and this kind of thing, there is a part of me still that just, I, it's hard for me to wrap my head around. Mm -hmm. And so I love to uh, learn from other people and get their perspective in an effort really for, to, to, to get it more. So yeah. uh, anything you could share about that? Uh, I'd sure appreciate. Yeah, sure. So again, I'm in no way qualified to speak about things like that from a medical perspective. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I do the multidimensional field. Like you say, it's so hard to wrap our, our minds around that because we think in a linear way and outside of this earth, time doesn't exist. Everything happens at the same time, but we can't even begin to imagine what that's like. Um, an example might be the movie Interstellar. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh, yeah. That kind of, I think that's kind of cool how, how they did that. But um, so in sessions, I'll see, um, sometimes I'll see the DNA spiral. I see codes moving into it. Um, I'll see something moving into the pineal gland. So I'll see it lighting up. Things will happen to it. And it's very different what they, that, might do to someone. So it can be a remembering of something, bringing something back, if you want to say online, shifting something. So all of this is helping you to center deeper into who you truly are and remember your innate gifts. And what you said before, um, it's not about just doing one course after the other. Of course, there's great stuff out there and, and you should do it, but also bringing it into balance um, meaning remembering what gifts you bring, what you bring into this, finding that balance and realizing that you don't have to get anything from the outside, but remember what's there. So all of this activation, if it's a DNA activation or, or activating your pineal gland, it's a frequency and a vibration that is at work. So as I said, I can't explain the medical aspect of it, um, but I've just seen 
incredible things happen through this healing work. So it's definitely very, very powerful. And I see it in visuals in the moment that it, that it happens. Oh, and I don't know if that makes sense, but <laughs> at, well, it kind of does, I guess the science person in me, the scientist is wondering, so if we take a person's DNA and we actually study it, then afterwards, does it look different? And maybe some of our listeners know the answer to that. I don't know. Uh, you know, I haven't been in that realm for a really long time, mm -hmm. but I do still have those kind of 3D curiosities about things. So that, I don't know, I guess the jury's still out for me on that. Yeah, that particular would be really thing. interesting to do that. Yeah, yeah. 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 We need to have somebody do a study about that mm. because, mm. you know, obviously we're still evolving as humans. Yeah. I mean, we didn't just stop that. So, I mean, that makes sense to me that we mm. would be evolving, but yeah, it does make me wonder, and I have to imagine other people too, what are those evolutionary changes, you know, that are, mm. that we're really undergoing at this moment? in history. Yeah. And you mentioned the pineal gland. And mm. um, for people who have that awakened, or uh, is that the right word for it, uh, activated, maybe mm -hmm. the pineal gland? Um, what is the result of that? Because I, I do hear about uh, that topic, you know, mm. here and there, out in the spiritual realm. So if you could share your perspective on that, that would be great. Mm. Well, to me, it's like a portal. So if it's clear and activated, um, it's so much easier to receive images and information. It really is like a like a, a cosmic gate for me where things come through. And so for most people, it's clogged up. I mean, through we're being poisoned in so many ways, let's be honest, with the food, with water, through the air. So um, there's a lot of cleansing on a physical level necessary and energetically to clear out so that we can come back online and be in touch with ourselves again. So, so many people have lost touch with themselves. And so especially for something like the pineal gland, it's so important what we put into our body to detoxify on a physical and energetical level, because by having an open activated pineal gland, you do receive so much more and it's crucial also for this kind of work. So, um, very important. Yeah. And how does that, you know, the other thing that is very common, I think, is grounding. You know, we mm -hmm. are here on the planet. And so I do meet a lot of people, though, who kind of don't want to be around the earth mm -hmm. so much anymore. But I have a totally different perspective on that. But what about grounding and all the work that you do? I mean, as we awaken that pineal gland and as we open up in the upper parts of our physical body, our energy centers, and that sort of thing. What do we also need to think about, though, because we have the lower energy centers, the physical body, and you've already addressed the physical body and the detoxification, but what do we need to do to balance as we open up to these higher levels of consciousness, this information? Mm -hmm. um, how, do we, how do we balance that as humans? Yeah, so grounding is very important and essential for this work. So it, you have to stretch into both directions, like reach to the stars, but ground yourself into the earth because there's a reason why we're here. And every one of us um, chose to be here at this time. And it's totally understandable for some people to um, have the tendency to want to leave because it's very challenging. And ex especially if you're very um, empathic and awake, and it can be very difficult in this world. And I have that as well. So I do a lot of grounding to, um, really be centered here, to be here, to say yes to being here. And sometimes that's not that easy, but with all of this energy work, it needs grounding. We need to be centered. So, um, for anyone working with this, um, to always have the focus on both directions, opening your channel into both directions, like the tree, you know, be deeply rooted in the ground um, and then reach up to the stars, whatever you want to, however you want to say it. And the branches that are then flexible, reaching out, um, connecting to your multidimensionality. But having that connection is very important. Yeah, I really agree. And, you know, gra grounding is something that comes up. I mean, I, I get that question a lot, you know, across different places that mm -hmm. I engage with people. and. I, 
am interested in your suggestions, I guess, Mm -hmm. for people to ground because, you know, we all kind of know the walk barefoot on the ground kind of thing and uh, that sort of thing. But what ways do you uh, ground that you Mm -hmm. find very helpful uh, since you spend so much time um, in the upper, upper realms in your work? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, something that everyone can do, um, especially if you don't have the possibility to now walk around outside barefoot or something, um, no matter where you are, if it's inside, if you either stand or sit with your feet flat on the ground um, and you imagine sending out roots of light from underneath your feet into the earth um, and then just imagine it going down deeper, like those roots of light going deeper into the ground and imagine a beautiful center, um, crystal in the center of the earth to connect with that. Imagine those light rays that come out from underneath you to blend with that crystal. And then begin breathing in from that point, from that crystal, and imagine drawing in the light and the vibration of the earth through those roots of light, through your feet, into your body, and really sinking into that, let's call it womb of the earth or... Mm vibration of the earth, breathing through the earth, that really helps to ground. And then if you want to take it a step further, you can set the intention to ground into the crystalline grid of the earth. And you don't even have to know much about it. Just having that thought and intention will ground you. So that's something anyone can do wherever you are. I did it, I mean, many times on stage, if I was tired or had to sing something very difficult and I felt a little like off, I just ground myself while I was singing, breathing through the ground, and straight away I felt my breath getting deeper and my singing getting easier. So you can do that in any situation. Oh, wow. That's, I love to hear the practical aspects, you know, and and (laughs) you doing that on stage. That's, that's really neat. Um, Because it just brings it into everyday life, you know, Mm. not that we're singing on stage or anything like that every day, but um, just in the normal routine, you know, Mm. of what we do. Um, And can you talk a little bit about the crystalline grid of the earth? Because you you mentioned that and you said you don't have to know that much about it. But um, I think it's a a fascinating uh, thing that you brought up. If you could just Mm. say a few words about what that is, help people really perhaps visualize that. Yeah. So let's see if you put it in a few words. So we're shifting in dimensions, basically. So the earth has her own vibration. It's a being of her own. And it's like the earth is held in her own grid, which is changing and shifting so, and we're also moving from, from a carbon-based structure into a crystalline structure in our bodies, like in the long run. So the earth, it's like an energy field, an energy grid. I don't know how to describe it best, if you would imagine it like that, with a crystalline structure holding that crystalline energy of the planet. And when you imagine grounding into that, you connect to that vibrational aspect of the earth. Let's put it like that. Um, it's a bit hard to describe. <laughs> yes. Um, so when you do these grounding practices and consciously centering yourself into that um, crystalline grid, you can you can call upon Archangel Sandalphon if you like. He's responsible for that grid and helps you ground into it. Um, yeah, so that'll bring you even deeper into your body and and help you to be really grounded here, especially if that's very difficult for you to do maybe. Yes, I I do think it's difficult for people, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. especially those who are so um, feel so connected, you mm-hmm. know, to other places other than Earth. But um, as you said, we're all here because we chose it, and you know, I I think Earth is the place to be right now with everything that's yeah. going on. Um, wow. I'm going to do that. I'm going to uh, use the, the grid idea. I, that mm-hmm. was really resonating with me there. Um, and, I, you know, one other one other subject I think that I'm a bit curious about with this is um, in your work, you help people with uh, timeline activation, um, mm-hmm. I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, that's another topic that our minds can't really grasp. So we can actively choose to move on our highest timeline, which um, 
which is part of the work. Like, um, I, I also have a meditation um, on YouTube. It's an older one. I think it's called 5D Timeline Meditation. That's one of the older ones. And a 5D Abundance one. So it's basically the same thing again. Stepping onto your highest timeline basically means, if you want to simplify it, stepping out of fear, becoming your truest self, saying yes to who you are, saying yes to what you would like to do, what um, makes your heart sing, what sparks your own light, to have the courage to walk your path. And so that's a very powerful thing to do. And as you do that, it's also about letting go of limiting beliefs with some of them you have to go deeper and find the root cause because some programs have been running for many years um, within us, especially childhood programs. But so there are ways to work through all of that and release those limitations that we basically placed upon ourselves, of course, without knowing it as children um, or, um, or with anything that happens to us in life, it can create these programs. And so... Um, if we do this work and walk upon our highest timeline, it's really about embracing that part of us that is already um, home, that carries it all within, and to bring that into fruition and dare to live that and dare to dream big and dare to bring our mission truly into this world. Um, yeah, I think that's how I would say it. <laughs> yeah, so well said. Wow, it makes me so excited just to hear you say that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And if everything's happening at the at the now moment, mm -hmm. you know, like you you mentioned before, because really there is no time. I think that's helpful to remember that because mm -hmm. for myself, it's easier for me to believe that I can live from that place and reach all of that all of my potential when it's really right there, because. Mm -hmm in this moment it's just yeah. not in my awareness mm. currently right so yeah. because we tend to think maybe that we we can attain that or we can uh reach these states in some far off time you know in some other place if i do this that and the next thing you know all of these barriers in order to reach it and i love this idea about the timeline and the now moment and that it's all mm -hmm. happening now because yeah. doesn't that just make it seem so much more accessible and make mm -hmm. all those barriers and things that we it's all illusion it's really right there isn't it it's absolutely it's right in front of us and um yeah you said that so well it's accessible in every moment and it happens in a lot of session where just the higher self of the client shows up and the client is just meant to bathe in in the energy of of her or his own being of the radiance of it of in the beauty of it and all that it carries um and that's always really beautiful when that happens and it is accessible in the now moment because everything that will ever do or ever be is already um the seeds are already within us it's nothing that we have to find somewhere, but we don't take the time anymore to actually go within, to be quiet, to become still and to listen. And then we run and we run and we run, but we don't, yeah, we don't listen. And when you go within, you start receiving answers that you were chasing on the outside. But in order to do that, you have to allow yourself to to calm down and to become still. And that's very challenging for some people in the beginning when you're not used to doing that. Absolutely. And then believing what comes through or trusting mm. what comes through. But, you know, you'll never get there unless you just do it, you know, unless yeah. you, you, yeah. you, you got to start off. Um, it is wonderful. I think so many more people are becoming quiet and giving them, themselves that opportunity. But Hmm. Um, this has just been remarkable, Marisol. I'm wondering if there's anything else that you'd uh, like to bring up uh, with our audience, anything hmm. you might want to share uh, before we go. Yeah, I think there is one thing, and it's it's been really important on my journey, um, the relationship that we have with ourselves. That is so important because our world mirrors that to us. So if I think I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, 
the world re will reflect that back in many ways. And I'm someone, I used to be very harsh with myself and critical, and I still have that aspect in some ways. But especially in the past years, I've really focused on giving the love and the compassion that I have for others so deeply to give that to myself. Why would I not give that to myself? Um, and going through these times with challenges, and I mean, we all have our good days, our bad days. I don't have all the answers. I have off days. But how do we treat ourselves on those days? Or how do we treat ourselves when we have maybe emotions that seem difficult or uncomfortable? So to learn to hold space for yourself also in those times, when you're a bit off, when you feel you're not at your best, when you have difficult emotions. So, yeah, I guess holding that space for yourself, um, no matter what comes up for you, and becoming more gentle and more loving with yourself, because we're all, I mean, just by being here in these times, we're all heroes, so. <laughs> we are. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's something that I find very, very important. Just how do you, how do you show up for yourself? Yeah. I love that message and that question to, to put to our listeners and our viewers also on YouTube. So, wow. Thank you, Marisol. Your, your, your work is just even more fascinating. This whole topic of light language and all the nuances there. And I have to imagine more and more people will be channeling light language mm -hmm. in the future. And I wonder what that'll be like you know, mm. and this whole new way of being that we really started talking about at the beginning uh, of our yeah. discussion, where we're going. And I, I, I think we can both agree we're both so hopeful and optimistic about that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of reason to be hopeful. I agree. I so agree. Mm. And for our audience who'd like to connect with you more, find more uh, information about mm -hmm. you and your work, um, how can they best do that? Well, best is to go over my website. So it's marisol.vision. Very simple. Oh, um, There's a contact form. You can just message me there. Um, I'm also on Instagram, just Marisol Ximenez. And um, yeah, you can drop me a line there as well and I'll respond. But I think the website is best. I definitely check out all those messages. Oh, fantastic. And we'll put a link yeah. also in the show notes and in the video description as well. And wow, um, I'm so excited for them to connect with you and find out more about this amazing topic and everything that you offer. And thanks so much for, for being with us, Marisol. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's such important work that you do and bringing all of these topics out to a wide audience. So thank you so much for, for having me. Absolutely. And from myself and the team here at Beyond the Reiki Gateway, we'd like to say thank you to our listeners for all of your support, including leaving great reviews, becoming BTRG insiders, and sharing this show with your friends and family. Drop us a line at info at beyondthereikigateway.com anytime. Tell us what's on your mind and take great care. Until next time. Thank you again for joining me. Please check the description underneath this video to learn more, connect with us, and get some important information about your listening experience. Wishing you all the best until we meet again beyond the Reiki Gateway.